welcome, welcome, Minecrafters, to Medieval Minecraft, episode 58. And in this episode, we are going to look at a really simple wither skull farm. And you know what's amazing about this farm is it results in the maximum number of wither skulls that we can get per session. Come over here, I'm going to tell you a little secret. We're going to be able to get... 1.7 wither skulls every time we use this and each use only takes about 30 seconds of in-game time yes this design is made for people like you and me that can't play minecraft 24 hours a day so we're going to make the maximum use of our afc time to collect as many wither skeletons as possible into a small area right near our AFC point without having to half slab out 128 blocks from the AFC point. And also we're gonna use minimal redstone. It's just gonna have one hopper timer and then just a line of redstone with a few pistons. So now we're gonna talk about the basic game mechanics that we're gonna exploit to make this thing work. The first is that mobs will only spawn when they're more than 24 blocks from where you are. And then they will not be able to move and they will despawn if they're more than 32 blocks from where you are. The maximum number of wither skeletons that you can have in the nether when you're on the Xbox is 25. And if you kill 25 wither skeletons with a looting three sword, on average, you'll get 1.7 skulls. I've actually gotten five in one session. Sometimes you get zero. Okay, well now I'm gonna cut out now and uh, show you the basics of the build and how it operates so you can put this in any world. So you need to half slab out, make it so there's no spawnable blocks within 32 blocks of the AFC point. You don't have to go to 128, just 32. And then you just make it so that your nether fortress has a real small spawning area that's more than 24 blocks from your AFC point so that the wither skeletons will spawn in. Then you make a little collection area that's less than 32 blocks. You know, it would be really easy. You could drop them down and make them like two or three blocks from where your AFC point is if you want just to make sure that they stay in the world and don't despawn. Then you set up a simple little crushing system that only crushes mobs that are two blocks high. Wither skeletons are more than two blocks high, so they won't get crushed by that. So you'll take out the blazes, the pigments, and the regular skeletons that are in your little trap. And then the ones that are outside your trap will randomly despawn over time. As those mobs outside the trap despawn and the two block high guys get crushed, more wither skeletons will spawn into your trap and eventually you will have only wither skeletons in the trap and you'll reach the maximum count of 25 allowed in the world. So when you come back from your AFC session, you just grab your looting sword and you can collect up the maximum number of skulls possible. So let's go up and take a look at mine. This one happens to be 20 blocks above my AFC point. I was too lazy to dig down here and make these guys drop down to one hit kill and everything. Notice how I put hoppers underneath everything? This little collection area is about 14 blocks long. I want to show you the crushing block right here. This thing is cycling through right now, a little hopper timer that just pushes these over, knocks off the two block high mobs, and leaves the wither skeletons hanging in here. Notice how there's nobody else in here except the wither skeletons. So we're just going to stop that little hopper timer right now by sending a pulse into it. I'll show you how that works later. And now we're going to go down and look at where I'm collecting them. You can just put a little chest at the end of that row. You don't even have to have that. You can just walk down and pick up all the loot yourself. I happen to have a sorting system here. I want to show you this. We've got 49 here in this stack. I want to, There's no video trickery here. I'm going to show you how many you get every time you come back from a session. This is just a random session that I just had. I'm going to use this potion of strength here to make it so that a one-hit kill It's easy for me to count the number of wither skeletons that we're going to knock off here. So let's take them out here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. S oh, there's a skull. Seventeen. All right. Excellent. Eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, and we got another skull. Two skulls. Awesome. Twenty-four, twenty-five. Now, in this uh, world, it only takes about an hour and a half, maybe two hours of AFC, but I don't really use it like that. Usually, I just run this thing when I'm uh, sleeping or off at work, and when I come back, I just turn on the game, collect up a couple of Wither Skulls, and then go on and play the game. I've got, uh, I've, I've probably collected up at least three stacks of Wither Skulls this way. 
Yeah, it's really pretty simple. Let's go down and take a look at how this, uh, right now we're shooting a bunch of the stuff that we don't want into a little trash can over here. I'll show you how that works. This is just a little sorting and collection area. I'm not going to really get into the detail on how this thing works. Like I said before, you can put a chest at the end of that row of hoppers, which is what I use for most of this thing, or <laughs> don't do anything. You just pick it up yourself. There's a row of hoppers coming in. This happens to be one of the sorters. I was kind of collecting up some arrows here. That's yeah, pretty cool. And you can see the other things that I'm collecting up when we go around the outside. Here we're getting uh, blaze rods. I've gotten three double chests full of those things. And this is the sorter that I'm using for the wither skulls right here. Okay, notice I got half slabs on the floor, half slabs on the ceiling and everything to make it so nothing spawns on top of the redstone. And then I had to put half slabs in here, you know, in this little area that I lit it all up. Just got to make sure that there are no two block high spots in here for anything to spawn on. So there's a half slab there, so then it makes it so that nothing spawns in there. And that's how you set this area up. You definitely don't want pigment in here. So there's the road that goes right underneath where all the uh, wither skeletons were standing when we were taking them out. That's just a little simple piston door right there. There's a good look at what it looks like. This is just the way I chose to light it up and decorate it out. You can do whatever you want in your world. Let's go back out here and take a look and see if we did get those two wither skulls. Oh, there you go. Sure enough, we did. Now, while this thing is running, we're going to get uh, gold and glowstone and coal and arrows, uh, bones. Uh, you don't get um, the blaze rods from the blazemen because you have to kill them uh, by hand in order to collect up the blaze rods. So I'll show you a way that I uh, have been doing that here with this little system. We've got our friendly Mr. Blazeman hanging out right here. You know, for a while he was able to shoot through the glass at me, uh, but that's since uh, subsequently been fixed with the TU-53 update. So I just flicked that thing. I'm using the same row of pistons that I use um, with the little cycling system just to uh, get this guy down to a one-hit kill. And then you just knock him off, and this is how you can collect uh, blaze rods. You can also collect up other things, but we can talk about that later. So I'm going to turn this, this system on. I, I called it the glowstone generator when I first built it because, you know, when you're AFC, it's just sitting here picking off the uh, blazes and <laughs> collecting up a lot of glowstone. I've got multiple double chests full of glowstone from this thing as well. So let's go back and take a look at the redstone. This is how it works. So this is a signal coming off of a hopper timer and off of that lever that we had set up down there before. I put half slabs above all the redstone to make sure nothing spawns in here, but I'll show you how it works. This happens just to be a little pulse extender because the redstone will only travel the uh, 16 blocks. So that's the way I just kind of made it so that all of the pistons would operate. The, the reason that the pistons are fired right now is because the redstone is lit on the blocks behind the pistons. That's how you fire a piston, obviously. Most of you probably already know that in Minecraft. Okay. But this is kind of practical way to use the half slabs to make it so that nothing spawns in here. Now let's go over here and take a look at the hopper timer and how the signal comes in. There's a standard hopper timer. You can see that uh, from Ethos videos or there's a bunch of different people that have uh, had videos on how to make hopper timers. I'll take this out and you can see I just use exactly the same set of redstone. Just hooked it up with that little repeater right there on the other side of that that uh, nether brick block. There's the leather that the, the uh, lever that we just used. And that's how this whole thing works. And if you put the uh, power to the blocks on the back side of those hoppers over there, which is what we do with that lever that's high up on the wall in the other room, comes in, power comes in right there, and that's what shuts the system off. So that's how we turn it on and off. Now I just chose to throw a full stack of nether rack in the hopper timer. Yeah, you could probably use anything you want. Maybe 30 would do it, or even a couple of stacks. It wouldn't make any difference. You know, they just make more spawning blocks. Actually, when the things are thrown across, things could spawn on them, so that might be good. Anyway, you could just, uh, that's almost random. Let's just uh, fill this in. And we'll go around to the uh, collection and processing area on the other side here, and then we'll head up to the little spawning area. Now, the great thing about this design is you don't need to worry about bounty boxes or intersections. We're not going to try to figure out you know, how to set up the, uh, the largest spawning area or anything like that. We're just going to use the little AFC session and let the mobs that are outside of our little spawning area and collection area despawn. So we're going to max out those wither skeletons. So let's cruise up. I built this thing. I just pick a nether walkway. Basically, any nether walkway. Pretty simple. I happened to build this one where it was all kind of covered up and, and you can see all the nether rack around here. This is probably the hardest place to build one of these things. 
it's going to require the most amount of half slabbing. You can see a bunch of half slabbing out there. If you built this over the top of a large lava lake and you just drilled down in the center of a, well, maybe a nether pillar or something, then it would be a lot easier, be less half slabbing. Well, let's just look at uh, how we take the spawning area and quickly push the wither skeletons and other mobs down into our little collection area. So we're just standing in a nether walkway. And the nether brick blocks right here, those right there, are the top edge of a nether walkway. So we put some string in here and we put some sticky pistons up on top. So here's the nether walkway again. You can see it's just a basic walkway. I happen to half slab out here. That's why we've got so much cobblestone that we're standing on here. And let me throw a block in here. You can see when it hits the, the string that's on the tripwire hooks, of course, the pistons fire across, and that's what knocks the bobs down inside. So I used uh, sticky pistons here. Now, when I originally uh, constructed this farm in episode uh, 24 of this little medieval Minecraft series, uh, the uh, mobs used to be able to spawn on top of pressure plates. So I used to have pressure plates in here with repeaters and everything, but since it's EU46 update, that has changed, so we had to come back in and put in all the uh, tripwire hooks and the string and everything to make this thing function. But if you want to see how to go through the entire build of one of these things in survival, you could uh, watch that episode. Now, notice there's some cobblestone down there. Sometimes these walkways are not totally, are uh, not completely formed with uh, nether brick blocks, but that's okay because the area that uh, a, would normally be a nether walkway is a legitimate, they're legitimate blocks for wither skeletons and other mobs to spawn on. I think what I'll do now is cut out the creative and give you a really good overview of how this whole thing goes together without all the nether rack in the way and all the half slabbing and everything. So uh, I'll be right back. So welcome to a little creative uh, demo world here where I built uh, another walkway over here off my uh, right shoulder on your left to uh, simulate what the walkway looks like and I'll show you what blocks we're going to use to for the wither skeletons and other mobs to spawn on. Now earlier I told you that you don't really need the entire walkway to be formed in order to use the area that's in it. Sometimes these walkways get real thin if they're far away from the uh, tall pillars in the nether fortresses so sometimes you'll find these where these blocks I'm knocking out right here are not formed in but that's okay because we can still use those for places for the mobs to spawn in so we're gonna put our uh, spawning pads and we'll build our pistons and everything in there so sometimes yeah this will be really thin something like this in uh, uh, nether walkways specifically you know way out over the top of some lava and things like that you'll sometimes find it like this but what we're gonna do is we're gonna use basically only four blocks if you got a cross section through another walkway to spawn on it's the top two and basically the bottom two corners okay so basically that block right there they're gonna spawn on this block right here we're gonna use them to spawn on this one they're gonna spawn on and then this one over here they're gonna spawn on the rest of them we're gonna take out we're gonna put pistons in and tripwire hooks and all that kind of stuff so over here on the right is where we have one constructed so that would be a spawning block right there and then down here, okay, I'm just throwing these in, make it really easy. You can take screenshots of this thing and make it really easy for you to build this if you're interested. Okay, so you can see where the pistons uh, all line up relative to those spawning blocks. You can see where we put in all the tripwire hooks and the string and everything. So they're spawning all along those blocks right there. And then the ones down in the lower corners. And there you can see how we're getting power to the, to the sticky pistons. So if a pigment spawns in here, he just gets knocked right down just like that. Very quick and easy. I mean, you could just make it so they have the range and fall off. You have to change the design a little bit to do that, though. So here's some blazes. You know, notice that even though they float, they still get knocked down. They go right down there real quickly. Okay. That's pretty nice. Now, I can't spawn in wither skeletons because... Uh, I don't have those in my creative world here. So you can see how it's all structured. You spawn right in like that. So either level that they come in on, obviously they'll they'll drop right down. Those guys are gonna catch on fire because it's uh, daylight here. Now I put half slabs in here just to make it really easy for you to see. You can drop these down as many as you want. If you drop them down about 21, 22 blocks, 
the, uh, the wither skeletons would be near a one-hit kill. Now, I didn't do that in my world. And then this is a demonstration of what we did in, the, in their little survival world, okay? I'll go around the back here and show you how that's all hooked up. Okay, so there's the repeater that we looked at before. There is the, uh, the string of redstone running along behind all the pistons. And we've got the uh, pistons right there with the blocks on them. And you can see a little pulse extender. It's just a different way to do it. I, I think I put the repeater on the other side, but that works just fine. And then here's the little hopper timer over here. I mean, you can take a screenshot of this. Those are both sticky pistons because just this, this hopper timer is going to cycle. Okay, now you can see I put a full stack in there. And if I turn the power off, things will start exchanging between the hoppers. So there's the comparators on either side. Those two hoppers are facing into each other. You could almost take a screenshot of this and just build it. Block of redstone in there. And that's just going to cycle, you know, on and off. And that'll be our little crushing system that'll take out our two high block mobs. There's our little blaze guy like before. So that's how it works. See, they quickly uh, get taken out. And you can see I hooked the hoppers up here in this case to a double chest at the end. You could do that, be really easy, no sorting system or anything like that. Makes it nice and simple. Now you'll need to put your AFC point more than 24 blocks below those two lower blocks right there, below the, the two lower spawning levels. That's just to make sure that uh, mobs will spawn in. And then when you drop them down, like we did in this case, you know, five or six blocks, to a little collection area, then they'll stay in the game. And of course, all the mobs that are not wither skeletons will be more than 32 blocks away, and they will randomly despawn. So now we have a simple way of making sure that we get the maximum number of wither skeletons in our world when we finish up our AFC session. Now let's zip over into our survival world and we'll talk about some tips and tricks for easy ways to half slab out, make sure we survive and kind of do the minimum amount of half slabbing that's necessary. Now, early on, you can operate the farm a few times and collect up plenty of blaze rods to make it so you can start doing a lot of brewing. And you're gonna to wanna to brew up a bunch of potions of fire resistance because that's gonna help you when you're out oh, battling gas uh, in the nether. Now out here, half slabbing the nether fortress is actually pretty easy because it's nice and flat. It's pretty uh, simple to make sure there's uh, nothing can spawn around other walkways and other areas in your nether fortress. Now let's talk a little bit about how to do some real simple math to make it so that you know exactly where you have to half slab. Now rather than uh, calculating out the perfect sphere, what I do is I just come up with a real simple little matrix by just uh, adding and subtracting 32 from where my AFC point is. And I just come up with six little numbers that tell me exactly where I have to half slab. Now what that'll do is I'll make it so that I'll half slab out a little bit more than I have to, but not too much. So here's, if you recall, my AFC point down there at the beginning of this little video was at X equals 139 y equals 48 and z equals 57. So we're just going to add and subtract 32 from each of those different numbers and get the min and the max for each of the coordinates. So the min x is going to be 107, the max is going to be 171, the minimum y is going to be 16, the max y is going to be 80, the min z is going to be 25, and the max z is going to be 89. And then I just convert that over into a little table that I wrote down, and I just uh, have that sit next to me when I'm out half slabbing. So as we cruise out here in this direction, you can see that the X at uh, you know around the 130 range there, 135 range is well between the 107 and the 171. And of course the Y is hanging around at, one, at just uh, 69 there. It's well between 16 and the 80. But the Z, look at the Z, we're approaching that minimum Z of 25. So we know we've reached the edge of where we have to uh, half slab. So you can see I, I fin finished it off right about here. Now this area over here was uh, pretty easy to do because it had a low ceiling with too many gas. Let's cruise out someplace where it's uh, a little bit more difficult. I uh, see here we go, <laughs> perfect, we got gas like cruising right in here. So you gotta bring a good bow and plenty of arrows. 
and of course uh, the potions of fire resistance. I, I bring a, I was bringing an ender chest, but you can bring shulker boxes now and have all this kind of stuff stored up in there. Uh, and so this is going to be one of the more difficult places that you'd have to have slab something like this because you're going to get blasted by gas and stuff like that. I uh, bring an ender pearl or two to help make it so you can get around. That that uh, certainly makes things a little bit easier. And uh, you can look at the map and you can see that this is the reason I have slabbed in here. This is within the range of the X, Y, and Z, you know, the min-max and everything. So I had to cruise around out here. You can see the Z is getting real close to the 25, so I stopped this edge right here. And I just cruised in here and did this stuff down like this. But if you did this over the top of a lava lake, it would be a lot easier. I'm just showing you uh, yeah, probably one of the most difficult places that you would have to have slab out. You can see right here, I'm right on the edge. See the Z is really close right there. And over there on the other side of that lava lake, I had to travel around the edge of the lava lake and put some half slabs over there because there were some spawnable blocks uh, over on that side. I think you guys uh, get the idea. You know, I, I find this kind of fun. Half slabbing out here and doing this kind of work made it so I learned how to survive in the nether really easily and uh, made it really a, a kind of a blast. It's cool. It's a great way to uh, gather up quartz and it's one of the more uh, awesome places to uh, hang out in the game. So you can see I'm outside of the Z range, so there's uh, no half slabbing out over here, but there's a lot of fire out here because I spent some time hanging around down here uh, very often in the game. This is uh, actually, there's a uh, nether portal down here that comes up off of my, oh, here we go, some quartz, excellent. So yeah, I got an awful lot of quartz when I was out here half slabbing. Uh, most of the quartz I used in, in, in my world, even a lot of the stuff I used when I was building my cathedral, I got from uh, doing this. I was talking about the uh, nether portal. I built one that's right above my spawn point, and then uh, very early in the game, I made a rail system from that up to where this uh, nether farm is. And uh, when I had to do that one, I was, uh, here's one of our gas buddies. Okay, so this is pretty typical, right? But if you got a decent bow, it's a piece of cake. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, whenever they're right next to you and they don't uh, reflect back, it grabs that arrow. That's really nice. So yeah, I was, uh, there we go, we got him. Built this little building uh, around the portal that came off of my spawn point. When I first came out to look for a nether fortress, I came back to the center of my world and built a nether portal because, you know, nether fortresses are pretty large. That's where the nether fortress is, right up there. That's uh, where we were. That's where our farm is and everything. And I, uh, I came looking for the fortress. I set up this portal down here because... Since nether fortresses are so large, if you start off in the center of your world, you're very likely to find one, you know, right around uh, you know, where your spawn point is. And then when I built this rail system, it was before uh, the TU-46 update, and so I had to put the glass blocks above the rails because stuff would spawn on it. And that was, uh, but you don't need to do that anymore. It is kind of cool, though. You just travel through it. You can look around while you're cruising around on your rail systems in the nether. And now we're back to the AFC point right here. So check out the map here. This is what we were talking about earlier. There's the 139, 48, and uh, 57 that we used to set up our little matrix to figure out where to half slab. Well, this is certainly a fun and productive build. I hope you all enjoyed this video. This is Wes. And I'm going to go battle some wither skeletons. <laughs>